Well, hello. It is the live chat here from the Pittsburgh Sports Live uh, Studios brought to you by Beaver County Audio. Beaver County Auto. They'll make a bub bub beaver. After they drop, drop the, the announcement of the third jerseys, oh, by the way, Matt Murray has a concussion. <laughs> so that on top of the stories we were already chasing, we were uh, looking into the, the, the extra practice the Penguins didn't have scheduled today uh, until after yesterday's uh, bit of a marathon practice, a bit of an intense go for Mike Sullivan after he let the boys know it wasn't acceptable on Saturday. So we've, we've got all of that here in the live chat. I want to get to your questions as well. We are, um, I've got the, all the cool stats and the, the, the charts and the graphs from the first couple games. The Penguins' uh, four lines appear to be uh, somewhat set, at least for game three. On defense is where the changes yesterday came. Today, uh, I guess moving forward, there will be a change in goal as well. Let's get um, right into this uh, Matt Murray situation, because I think that's probably the, the most pressing of all the issues before we talk about Yuso Rikola and everything else. Um, by the way, jump on to the uh, YouTube chat. It's a lot more fun, you know, when you're participating, throw your questions, comments at me. Uh, we'll get to them. Also on Twitter, I, I'm doing this live, so I can see, I can see everything you got going on. Uh, this is Murray's eighth injury for which he will miss time in 113 games. This is Murray's, well, at least his third concussion. There were some other upper body injuries. You're never quite sure if those were really a concussion or... Um, you know, if those were something else. Eight injuries in 113 games. Big goalies, one of their, uh, let's call it one of their uh, benefits, is that they're generally healthy, healthier than the smaller athletic goalies who typically had the, the lower body issues with hamstrings and groins because of, of the movement. Now, this really, I think, presents an interesting dilemma for the Penguins. Obviously, I think Tristan Jari is going to leapfrog Casey DeSmith if Matt Murray misses any significant time. Bear in mind, last February 24th, Matt Murray missed uh, 26 days, beginning on the 24th when he was injured. Didn't play again until March 20th. Actually, I guess with the uh, it's about 24 days, sorry, because of uh, the short February. Uh, still missed 24 days with the concussion. I think that uh, Jari leapfrogs Casey DeSmith. I'm not sure there is much question about that. I think uh, Jari is more built as a starting goaltender. But the dilemma comes in. Um, you'll forgive me a little bit. My eyes are watering we've just been uh, running full steam here um the dilemma comes in what do the penguins do about the backup goaltending situation do they stand pat do they give jari a trial run as a quasi starter a, a bit as they did last year uh, Jari posted slightly better numbers than murray had a great quality save percentage did jari uh, as I recall, it was uh, over 600, and the average is 533. So Jari was making big saves in those starts, but it was Casey DeSmith who had the wins and the higher save percentage. How confident are the Penguins? How confident is Jim Rutherford right now in standing pat? I know it's only October. But he's got to be looking ahead to April, May, June, and wondering, what if Murray goes down? Doesn't that phone ring? Don't you pick it up and, and, and don't you make a, a few inquiries? I mean, there, there are a few uh, goaltenders bouncing around the league who, who are kind of 1A guys, but they got snapped up. A, a lot of the... 
the mediocre goaltenders got snapped up in free agency. You know, Buffalo jumped on Carter Hutton as, as their starting goaltender. And the Islanders uh, got a little bit of a gift from, from that move by Buffalo when they picked up Robin Lehner, who had the shutout last night, his first game as an Islander, he picked up the shutout. And the Islanders are really moving uh, Laner towards getting healthy. He admitted he was battling depression and some mental issues. Uh, good on all of them. Good on uh, Robin for admitting it and good on the Isles for helping in that process. There aren't a lot of goaltenders uh, on the market. There just aren't. A, the name that leapt to my mind was uh, Jacob Markstrom up in uh, Vancouver. I don't think the Penguins can afford him, though. Uh, and I was just kind of rolling through a, as fast as I could when the news broke. Okay, goaltenders that the that the that the Penguins might look at if they're not uh, going to be sold on Jari being able to carry the load. And uh, Justin, kind of um, Justin, yeah, you busted me a little bit. Jari is a starting goaltender, even if that means in in Wilkes-Barre. That, that's, that, that's why they sent Jari to Wilkes-Barre, uh, so that he could continue to start. It's going to be a, it's a real conundrum, I, I think, for the Penguins. Now, connecting dots that aren't necessarily connected. Yuso Rikola is going to make, probably going to make, his uh, first start tomorrow night against Vegas. There, uh, I haven't checked the lines from Keith Barnes, our reporter at uh, the Penguins practice today. He said there was a lot of special teams, so I'm not sure if they, if they did the line rushes or, or not, or even if it means anything today. But yesterday, uh, Ricola in place of Mata. Does that make a Penguins defenseman expendable? Does that tie in to this whole Matt Murray situation? I mean, it's a concern. Look, that's Murray's third concussion in 10 regular season games. Counting the uh, 12 playoff games, that's his third concussion in 22 games. Second, I'm sorry. Second concussion in 22 games. February and now. Uh, third concussion in 100, actually less than 113 games because he was injured late in the regular season in 16 with uh, a bit of a head knock, too. So you're, we're talking uh, three concussions in 60-odd games. If the, if the <laughs> Boy, Ricola has the world in his hand right now, doesn't he? By the way, I ran a Twitter poll, and uh, let me uh, find the results of that real quick here. How excited are you for Ricola? I, I think a lot of people really want to see what the kid has. So what do you think? Will he do very well to excellent? Solid to pretty well? Or he'll be okay? And uh, let, me, uh, let me find my screen here. We have to add, add my laptop in real quick. And I'll, I'll, I'll let you see my, my Twitter. I guess uh, you can see a couple of my notifications. And you can see right there, 26% think he will do, there we go, 26% think he'll do very well. 62% put him in the middle, solid, pretty well. And 12% think he'll be okay. Hey, by the way, we've gotten through nine minutes. No technical difficulties yet. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Ricola has, has taken this team by storm. Mike Sullivan went from uh, saying surprised about certain aspects to kind of admitting he, he didn't know much about Ricola. And, uh, he was learning as they went through preseason. Obviously, uh, there was a lot of buzz inside the Penguins organization as much as there was outside. I, I think a lot of the players looked at him like, holy cow, who is this kid? And just, I mean, we, we really haven't, I, I I don't think many reporters or anybody has really had a chance to sit down and, and really talk to him. We've, we've had a couple media chats with uh, 
Ricola. I keep saying Ricola. That's kind of ingrained in me. It'll be, uh, I guess it is technically uh, Ricola. We have it. Uh, we had a couple of chats with Ricola, and he is just as as unassuming and aw shucks and well, this is really cool as you could possibly I- imagine. Any question kind of was met with a smile, and I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, he really has a uh, carefree isn't the right word, but it was definitely a um, an excited. Let's see what we've got. No fear sort of way that uh, Ricola was uh, approaching it. So let's see here. Brad asked if Murray, if, if Murray doesn't come back to form and Jari doesn't pan out this year, what's Penn's plan B for a goalie? Uh, I'm not sure they have one. I guess that that would be plan C, Jari's plan B. So what's their plan C? Uh, I don't think there is one, quite frankly. They would have to move salary to acquire a veteran backup goaltender. They would have to find a team willing to give them a veteran backup goaltender, and that might not happen until February. I think the trade deadline this year is February 26th. It, it might take into February before uh, somebody becomes uh, available. Florida might have to fall in or out uh, of the playoffs before uh, Reimer would become available. I could never see the Penguins picking up Luongo. Carolina uh, went through their, their whole uh, goalie shuffle. Uh, sure, they would probably deal Darling if they're not in the thick of it. Or, but would the Penguins want... Scott Darling, I, I don't know. So there's there's a lot of variables, Brad. I, I don't know what Plan C is. Uh, I really, I really don't. By the way, we are here in the Pittsburgh Sports Live studios. I think I flubbed the opening line. Brought to you by Beaver County Auto. Dodge, Jeep, great deals up in Beaver County. They'll make a bub bub beaver believer out of you. And we, we thank them for coming on, as well as our PHN sponsor, uh, Attorney Joshua Lamb. If you've been injured at work uh, in a motorcycle accident, knock on wood, or, or in a car accident, you have to know your rights and you need an attorney. Give Josh Lamb a call. The ads are all over our website there, so, so check those out. Uh, let's get into the Penguins lines. Oh, I guess I should let you know, uh, maybe dive into Ricola just one brief quick second here. If I have to predict what you're going to see from uh, Ricola, the, the, the kid is going to, uh, I'm going to put him on the top end of the curve. He's going to be more than okay. He's going to be more than solid. I think he's going to be good. I think he's just going to come out balls to the walls, you know? He's going to come out flying, excited. He might even make a mistake or two. And uh, that's what I, I want to see. Now, I don't want to see him make mistakes, but I want to see how he bounces back because they're inevitable for every defenseman, especially if you're on the Penguins with the high wire act. I, I want to see him in that full go regular season when when the forwards are, are all over the ice. Sometimes uh, the few forwards aren't paying attention and not uh, covering high, how he responds to all of that. Uh, I'm really uh, interested to see. I th- I see a bit of Chris Letang in him. Uh, Ricola isn't as stocky as Letang, but he's got that speed. He's got that. There, there's a certain uh, dynamism to his his game, where he can chip in offense just out of nowhere. I don't know if he wants to do that right away. I, I guess we'll find out how fearless the kid is. All right, let's get into the, uh, the the Penguins' lines now. Yeah, yeah, Justin reminds me it is uh, Ricola. I, I will keep saying Ricola. I'm going to keep flubbing it. I'm going to keep apologizing. I know it is uh, <laughs> Ricola. Uh, the Penguins' lines, they, they, they really probably uh, should ha- shuffle them before Thursday. Here is the on-ice save percentage. Now, 
Five on five, the on ice save percentage really should be, oh, let's call it 91, 92, even 93 percent for good teams. Thus far, only the Penguins' top line, Gensel, Crosby, Hornquist, has, has achieved anything close to that. And they're at 91 and change. Haglin and Malkin are down near 80. Brassard and Rust, I think they were on, on the ice for uh, one of the cheap goals. So th they took a little bit of a hit. But they're at 70. And then the fourth line. Oh, boy. Cullen, Sheehan, Sprong, 60%. Now, this is I I'm leading you to water. I'm not going to dunk your head in and make you drink. But I am uh, leading you to water because the next little graph we're going to hit here is the Penguins' Corsi. The Penguins' uh, Corsi by the line. Crosby, close to 70%. That's good. Malkin, Haglin, Kessel, of course, they're around 50%. Whenever Kessel and Malkin are together, that's going to be standard fare, 50%. Third line actually had a great game uh, against Washington. They were at 74%, 75% Corsi in the first game. They, they took a bit of a beating. Uh, Simone had a bit of a rough game against Montreal. So, so they dipped. But there again, look at uh, Cullen, Sheehan, and Sprong. Under 40%. And that's why we, we put the, uh, the fifth line on these charts on PittsburghHockeyNow.com is because... Uh, the the Penguins put Brian Rust on that line. They they just they they pulled Sprung out of the lineup for a good five minutes, five minutes of ice time, mind you. And look what happened when Rust joined that line. They went up to nearly sixty percent. That's a huge gap, and that's something that the coaches are going to mention to Sprung. Uh, I don't know how long his leash is. He has a grace period. He's not going to have a grace period long if his play is contributing to a Corsi below 40. That's, that's nearly unacceptable. I mean, that's, that's really playing poorly. Don't forget to uh, do me a favor. Hop on to the YouTube uh, live chat. Want to get uh, as many people as we can on there kind of a I didn't we didn't do any pre-promotion of this uh, chat today just uh, this morning we, we cranked it up so share it on Twitter share it on Facebook uh, Google has been putting the, uh, the, the 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 screws to us a little bit they Google shuffled us down on the order uh, again so we have to work our way back up because we're not one of the big boys who has uh, 5 million people coming through every month just because we exist. We have to earn every single click and uh, reader. So if you could help us out, click on that subscribe button, click on, uh, on the, uh, the video, and share it as, as we go. So we've hit Murray. We've hit uh, Ricola. Uh, I can finish up the lines a little bit here. Not much more I need to say. Probably. I, I think you're, you're getting the, the hint of, of where I'm going. Here it is, the goal differential, and that's probably the most important one, right? The blue is not good. Orange is, is good, and gray is the equation. So you see there uh, Crosby, his line, a uh, couple goals. They're, they're a plus one. Malkin and Kessel, <laughs> they're a minus two. Simone Broussard and Rust, minus one. Cullen and uh, Sprung and, and Sheehan, also minus two. You can't have, you can't, 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 can't have your fourth line minus two in such limited time. Just that, that trend absolutely cannot continue. And with uh, Cullen and Rust, uh, with Rust on there, they did give up a goal, despite the uh, aggressive Corsi numbers. And that's where, that's where it is. I, I wonder, I think Sprong gets all of October. I think he's got a solid three more weeks yet. You have to wonder what the Penguins do, though. Do, do they bring up, or, or, I mean, yeah, do they slide Derek Grant over to the right side and kind of just fill him in a bit? 
Do they uh, plug Dominic Simone in on the right side, let Derek Grant take the left side, maybe Matt Cullen plays third line with uh, Derek Broussard? You start really getting into some jigsaw puzzle juggling here. Maybe the simpler solution is, well, I guess they can't. They can't call up Zach Aston Reese right now because they've, they've got eight defensemen on the roster. Even with uh, Murray, they've got to call up uh, Jari now, too. So there, there's no room at the inn for Zach Aston Reese unless the Penguins were willing to risk uh, sending Derek Grant through waivers, which I, I, I don't see happening just yet. Or, heck, maybe Ryan Haggerty gets the call. Perhaps I, I'm placing uh, Haggerty or giving him the short stick. That would be interesting. But I, I think uh, sooner than later, something is going to have to give. I, I think I've been pretty clear, though, that uh, I, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a guy who's buying that Sprong is going to morph into an NHL player this year. He, he may get to passable. He, he may get to uh, okay. But how long can the Penguins give him to get there? It, it's, I think the writing is on the wall. He has to turn it around. He, he, has, to, he has to play better. And I'm, I'm just not sure that he knows what that means. You can tell a guy a thousand times what he has to do. But when he's in the ice, on the ice and that chaos is surrounding him and, and he's feeling he should go one way or he, you know, he's been rewarded for going one way in juniors or, or in the minors. He's been rewarded for doing one thing. You're telling him to go a different direction. It's hard to, to rewire a guy. I, I think that's, uh, that's sprung. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Brad's saying thank you. Well, Brad, I appreciate that. You're you're very welcome. Uh, Checking, you know, it's been kind of dead. Um, everyone's just lurking uh, on Twitter and uh, all of the uh, the other fun stuff there. I guess it is October. If I have one more person say, "Ah, eh, these games don't matter until April," I might have to slap that next person. Just. Just, just give them a little shot. Did you learn nothing from last year? I, I mean, uh, honest to gosh, seriously. Did you learn nothing from last year? The people who say the games don't matter. The regular season doesn't matter. Oh, their first meaningful game is in April. Did you see what happened last April and May when the Penguins tried to flip that magical switch because they told themselves that, oh, it's just the regular season. It doesn't matter. Did you see what happened? They were sloppy with a capital S. I considered putting a capital F there, but no, it's sloppy with a capital S. They beat Philadelphia because Philadelphia managed to be even sloppier. But they couldn't beat Washington because Washington uh, stuck to their guns just enough. The Penguins didn't uh, dishevel Washington, and it was Washington who capitalized on the Penguins' turnovers and sloppiness. Those things have to be fixed in the regular season. And that is why Mike Sullivan uh, went to the whip yesterday in practice. That's why he went to the whip after the game Saturday. Look, I, 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 I don't get to you know, hang out and drink beer with Mike Sullivan and, and, and really pick his brain. Boy, wouldn't that be fun, huh? I, I'm just telling you how I read him in the media scrums and, and the few minutes afterwards. How I read his take on last year was he was frustrated and he was a bit angry at his team. When he said that they, they tossed around a lot of uh, rationalizations, the line that preceded that, or I'm sorry, uh, proceeded that, was it was nothing we didn't anticipate as a coaching staff, but... They were preaching, and, and the players just couldn't get the car in gear. And I'm not saying Sullivan has lost the room. Don't, don't extrapolate that too far. But here we are at a, a bit of a pivotal moment just two games into the season where the coaching staff 
is letting their voice be heard to get the player's attention. Olimata had uh, three turnovers. I think he, he's got, what, five or six on in two games? And, and obviously he's going to likely get a seat on Thursday. I'm sure a few other uh, players had, had a little talking to. The Malkin-Kessel line. <laughs> you know what? Um, this is what makes Sullivan a, a good coach. He did not put those two together unaware that they were gonna, going to, to stink together, unaware of what was going to happen, that they were going to pass too much, not get enough shots, struggle on defense, lose some puck battles. He put them together not unaware those things were coming. Sometimes you just have to let your kids make mistakes, let things play out according to their wishes. And I think there's a, a good bit of that going on, letting Malkin and Kessel play together. And I wonder how long that's going to last. I, I haven't yet said I told you so to anything, but if you read my season predictions, geez, like three. We're already, I think I've already been able to check three off the box, including that Malkin and Kessel would play together through October, but not without a stern warning and then the result would uh, determine their fate together. If they haven't warned Malkin and Castle by now, uh, that warning is coming very soon. And what happens after that, uh, I'm just not sure. little cheap plug for our friends <laughs> up in uh, Beaver County. Wanted to just uh, do that real quick. Click on that uh, subscribe button if you will. Uh, so what else do you, do you want to get to? I actually expected a, a few more questions today, but I think everyone is, is kind of uh, on their hands, waiting to see what comes next, right? Because it was a bad game uh, against Montreal. Now, bear in mind, uh, I didn't uh, watch the game live Saturday. I've watched abbreviated version here is me on Saturday having a lot more fun than I normally do. Nope, I can't zoom in. That's the, the grandson. And that's uh, me getting old and deciding I don't want to be called Pappy. <laughs> I won't be. I won't be a Pappy. I promise you. I think we're going to go with G-Pops. What do you think? <laughs> No vest either this week. No beard, no vest. I actually uh, bothered to get up early this morning and, and look somewhat presentable. Let me uh, jump back here onto the, uh, onto the chat board. Odd suggestion, move Malkin to wing and let Broussard center Kessel and Malkin. Uh, not far off. You'd see Broussard on that left wing with Malkin and Kessel. But I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Just remove Kessel from that line. Slide Kessel down with Broussard. You either put Hornquist with Malkin or you put Simone. And, and problem solved. It, it, it really uh, it will, will be that simple. Or, or, or Brian Rust as well. Somewhere on that second or, or, or top line. You can't put Sprong there uh, until he uh, gets his game together. So I, I, I think that is, is what's coming soon. The Penguins are going to have to get in gear. They're not in danger of missing the playoffs. They're, they're far too talented for anything as drastic as that. However, without Murray for an undetermined period of time, Mike Sullivan... Uh, I don't know if Sullivan has talked. Let me check uh, my report uh, from Keith Barnes. Mm, okay. Mata is likely a scratch on Thursday. So Okay, so Mata with some line rushes today was on the uh, fourth pairing again. I don't know what else to tell you uh, about uh, all of that. It matters. The regular season matters. Whether you get two points in October or two points in March, they matter. And in fact, 
it, it matters now to get your game going. That used to be the, the, the whole uh, timeline. You can have some fun in October. As you turn the calendar into November, looking ahead to U.S. Thanksgiving, that's when you dial in your game and the general managers begin to make uh, begin to assess what they've got in their roster. And then between Thanksgiving and Christmas, you begin to tighten a little bit. Then after the holiday break, you, you should be there. It doesn't work like that anymore because of this goofy points system that the NHL's got. And we could probably spend an hour talking about this dumbass points, uh, two points for a win, one point uh, for a overtime or, or shootout loss. It keeps everybody grouped together. So the better teams who win more games in regulation do not get that separation. In fact, I asked uh, Crosby uh, about that uh, late in training camp. And I asked him about, about being rested a few games. He played 82 games last year and all 12 playoff games. You look at the San Antonio Spurs, the Golden State Warriors, other teams in the NBA who rest their superstars come hell or high water. You know, they'll sacrifice a game or two because they can get that separation. That's what Crosby opened my eyes to. I was kind of under the impression, look, Crosby should play 75 to 77 games. Don't worry about playing all 82. If you rest him in the second half of a back-to-back -back on the road, good. Same with Malkin. Same with Latang. However, uh, Crosby's answer was, look, we're all so tight, you can't afford to miss two points. That applies now, too. You really do have to put a certain effort forward. Even in October hockey, you have to put a, a certain level forward to that. Uh, oh, third jerseys. Let's uh, dive into this. What do you think? Here is the Penguins' third jersey. That comes right from the Penguins' website, going uh, retro with the gold, black sleeves, gold lid. All right. What do you think? I don't, I, I'd love to tell you I love them. I really kind of don't. I, I, I never really liked that gold sweater. And I was a kid in the uh, mid-'80s when they wore those originally. Mario did, and it kind of had the, um, you know, a bit of a what's different here on the, the third jersey now from then. Kind of had like a little yellow bubble, little yellow... Uh, I don't know what, what you want to call it, covered the shoulder pads. That's really the biggest difference into the black sleeve. I like a black base trimmed with the gold. The golden lids, yeah, just, they look like mustard bottles out there flying around. Stadium game, it works. 15 or it was, uh, 12 games this season doesn't work uh, as much uh, as you want. Oh, I even forgot to. There's Ricola. I know your hearts are a flutter now. Ricola. That's what I said. I said Ricola. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I think that's about to uh, wrap it up for us here. A short chat. I know it's kind of a Tuesday. It's not really a, a Penguins day, but all the news just uh, kind of bombarded us. So we. We rolled with uh, the, the chat today. I thank everybody for uh, stopping by on the YouTube page. Hey, no technical difficulties. No lagging. No freezing. No me getting up out of the desk. I wonder if that's why uh, if everyone's like, let's see if Kingerski figures it out. So uh, we'll, we'll get there. And uh, we'll do it uh, clean and crisp again. Maybe later this week. If not, uh, we'll do it again early next week. Until we talk again, kids, have fun.